Hey guys, this is Alana and this is our second, what do we call them, COVID conversations? Yeah, I was thinking, you know, it could be Corona conversations, but then they're going to picture us sitting around drinking beer while we have the conversation. <laughs> so I think, I think your title was better. COVID conversations. Welcome guys. We hope that you are staying healthy. It is Wednesday, March 18th. How are you guys doing, Jamie? We're doing well. Uh, so we, my husband is now officially working from home unless he has meetings and he had a big meeting today. So I brought him lunch and decided to brave Costco. We had not gone to mm -hmm. Costco this whole mm -hmm. time. And I got there and I mean, I heard horror stories initially about how the lines were out the door right. and, you know, no toilet paper. They were out of a bunch of stuff. They did have toilet paper. They had the Kirkland brand. So, mm -hmm, nice. you know, for those that, and it was limited to one per person, but um, mm -hmm. from what I've been told, they have a big warehouse. Like there was an old Toys R Us that was bought by Costco uh, and uh -huh. my husband had an optometrist appointment in Costco at their like not affiliated, but center, yeah. Out, yeah. And the guy was giving him all this insider information oh, about really? like, yeah, yeah. And he said, oh yeah, they've got stuff stocked up. They just bring it out. They, they don't ration it, I guess, but they bring it out mm -hmm. at certain times yeah. Yeah. and they're not just going to restock just to restock, you know, they're going to wait. So Makes it sense. was, yeah, short lines, easy to get through. No big deal. Good. Yeah. But it's definitely different. Everybody's it feels like people are really conscious about not getting close and they yeah. have signs that said, please practice social distancing and lots of people wore gloves and, and mm -hmm. a few people wearing masks. So, you know, it is a different world, but in general, yeah. I feel like Costco has become more normal than it has. That's good. Yeah. I like the idea of just kind of limiting. My husband did a, a trip to the grocery store and it was the same thing. Like all the boxed things, it was like a limit to per customer. That just seems smart and wise mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and does. then i like how some stores are having certain hours where seniors can go shop or people with um you know special considerations where they don't have to try to brave the crowds i saw that and i thought that mm -hmm. was great is that in alaska i can't remember where I, I saw that not that i've seen i think i just saw a headline about how some stores are doing that so yeah you know it's just it's been a neat way to remind us to be checking up on each other you know i saw yeah. a really cute note on facebook i have a facebook friend and she said something to the effect of well my husband and i didn't consider ourselves old till all the neighbors started checking on us to see if we needed anything yes <laughs> and up, up until then she's like i didn't know that we were you know in that age bracket that everyone else around us would be worried it was cute yeah actually my um so my husband's aunt said something mm -hmm. to that effect. She said, you know, uh, it's kind of a funny thing to be checking up on the elderly only to realize that you are elderly also. I know, I know. Or I saw another funny meme where it was, you know, in a strange reversal of my childhood, I'm now having to yell at my parents to make them stay at home. <laughs> oh yeah. My husband was talking to his parents yesterday and he was issuing strong, like now don't be overly confident. You guys need to be home and yeah. Um, well, I've got relatives mostly over 60 in the Bay Area, several oh. kind of batches of, of relatives. And I know they're on some of the strictest kind of lockdown uh, procedures right now. So yeah, yeah, it is. It's just a, a new, a new time. I was thinking about um, like, what were you doing the week ago today? Do you even remember? Yeah, I was trying to think that. Um, I know that we were on it we were starting spring break mm -hmm. for the kids mm -hmm. so yeah. it was you know midweek spring break um but i i mean i know our house was being worked on i know mm -hmm. that we had some interactions with people cuz like they hadn't talked about too many limitations at that point had they right i mean we had heard about it but that was yeah you know, I mean, unless you were kind of traveling internationally or about yeah. to go on a cruise, it didn't really feel like it was a, a huge big deal. Yeah. And so the the first thing that kind of was, I guess, a, like a, not a red flag, like a, 
and something that was affected. We had two kids with birthday parties this weekend, this past weekend, mm -hmm. and they were, they had to totally change their plans and both kids ended up, um, or was it last weekend? It's really hard to keep track of the days even, isn't it? It is because I'm thinking this weekend, I don't think we did any like, uh, maybe they did, but whatever the case, it was an outdoor ice skating rink where everyone mm -hmm. was wearing gloves, hats, everything, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure that it was, yeah. And, but there was no food involved. There was just mm -hmm. go out, everybody skate, nobody's touching. And so they were, they went out skating, but I don't know if that was this weekend or if it was last weekend. Anyway. Weird. Yeah. No, it is strange. I was trying to think, you know, if there's a day that everything changed, you know, like it wasn't quite a day. It was absolutely a week. Like we are in the week that it feels like everything changed. So but, for me, I remember talking to my husband and saying mm -hmm. that I think things would really get crazy when they announced the first case in Alaska. Uh -huh. I felt like that would make people panic. And I think that happened last Friday. Didn't it? That sounds about right. You know, in my opinion, I would say if I had to pick a day, it would either be Friday or Saturday and yeah. definitely by Sunday, you know, by, I think by Friday, we knew that church was going to be canceled, a lot of things like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, maybe it, it's our, our generation's uh, Black Friday or something like that. Yeah. Well, and for the stock market, it, it sure was a bad week. So I don't know what oh, day yeah. they... Had yeah, I don't remember what day it was either. Plummet, yeah. but it was, mm -hmm. it, it crashed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a financial person, but I would be interested to kind of look back on how that all mm -hmm. pl mm -hmm. played out and is continuing to play out. But right, right. So how's your just kind of overall stress level? How are, how are the kids doing? All that kind of stuff. Um, the kids seem fine. They're asking more questions and they keep saying, so no kids have died from this right Aww. like they've had a couple of and um but they you know we have a plan for we have a sick room that is going to be assigned to anyone that gets sick whether it's coronavirus or not <laughs> that's interesting yeah so tell us your plan we haven't thought through that but that yeah. sounds pretty interesting yeah what's so, your plan so our plan we have a bedroom in our main living area, but it's, it's downstairs. Mm -hmm. The other bedrooms are upstairs. So we have a bedroom that had been used as like a mother-in-law, in-law quarters mm -hmm. by the people that lived here before. They actually had it like curtained off mm -hmm. where there's a bedroom and, and then you have to go outside the bedroom, but there's a bathroom and mm -hmm. there's actually like a little bar going across the tiny hallway that goes mm -hmm. to those. And so right now that's just our main level bathroom that we use. But if someone mm -hmm. were to get sick, I would hang, you know, we would probably hang a curtain just to remind uh -huh. people not to use it. Mm -hmm. And then that would be that bedroom and bathroom would be exclusively for the sick person and they would not leave. Um, Interesting. So we just thought that would be a good plan. And, you know, at this point, the kids are just like, oh, does that mean that if I got sick, I could play Minecraft all day? <laughs> so yes, yes, it does. <laughs> that's, that's the extent of their worry. And it's uh -huh. funny because for me, I haven't had the degree of anxiety in general that I thought I would, but it, it's like, it catches up to me. Like I, I'm not consciously mm -hmm. worrying, but like every once in a while I'll catch myself with like the fluttery feeling in my chest for no good mm -hmm. reason. And I'll think, mm -hmm. I think I'm feeling a little stressed just in general. Interesting. But, yeah. yeah. For me, it's not the fluttery feeling. It's just kind of the heaviness and, you know, just a sense of it. I, it truly is a surreal kind of feeling, you know, I picture this. So there's a, a movie that my our family likes to watch it's called hope and glory and it's about um england during world war ii uh -huh. and how they had like just it was surreal for them it was from the, kind of a kid's perspective mm -hmm. and it was um i don't know it was just an interesting or maybe yeah i'm not even i think it was world war ii but anyway it was just wartime in england from in london and then they moved outside of the city but it was the same sense of surreal like yeah life is kind of going on as normal but it's kind mm -hmm. of totally different from it what it was yeah. before you know you know i had a neat thought i was in the shower this morning and i was thinking about how like yes this is a scary time yes this does feel historically monumental but 
I just realized it, it truly does feel like a blessing that I think that that's what makes this different than like a war or something. I think there are some similarities in that you're just kind of shell shocked and I can't believe this is happening and is life ever going to go back to being the same. But the difference is like, there's not a human enemy that's out to get us. Right. And to me that, that kind of feels like, um, you know, the story of the people in Italy singing on the balcony, you know what I mean? Like all these other stories of people pulling together. And I feel like since basically the whole globe is kind of going through this together, I feel like that's, that's a real positive thing. I've been thinking about that quite a lot because I think there are similarities to like when a war breaks out and you just have this kind of, I can't believe this is happening, but again, life does go on, <laughs> you know? Um, I went through a season a couple of years ago where I was reading a lot of historical fiction set during the siege of St. Petersburg during mm -hmm. World War II. And it was just, it was crazy intense but they would still do concerts and you know like the orchestra would pause for the um bomb sirens and then just go back to like you know and and not having lived through anything like that you do have this question well how, how do you how do you continue on and i think we're getting maybe a tiny taste of that right now and it mm -hmm. is like life does go on and what a blessing that we don't have an active human enemy that is maliciously out to get us, you know? Right. And it, it does feel like the global community has come together mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, that it is an opportunity for unity. Opportunity for unity. Say that <laughs> three times fast. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I saw this cute thing. I posted it on my Facebook um, page. So I don't know what dance troupe it was, but there was some dance troupe where their, you know, their performances are all canceled. And so each of the dancers took a video of themselves doing one of the dances, you know, in their quarters. So like oh, one of them is like neat. in front of a bunk bed, one of them's in this itty bitty studio kitchen kind of thing. And then someone just kind of edited them all together. And it was, again, just such a neat picture that especially with technology being what it is that we truly are continuing to be connected. And that's, you know, that's what I love about what you and I are doing. I just feel like people are, um, we, we all really need this sense of community right now and we can do that. You know, that's amazing. Yeah. Did I share this yesterday when we were talking about how I heard about like the NBA players that were giving their own salary money? Like they were actually, I heard about that. Yeah. I don't think we talked about it yesterday, but mm -hmm. I loved that story, how there were NBA players that were saying, don't worry about us. Like we, mm -hmm. We have plenty of money, but here, these are people that rely on events to sustain yeah, so their budget. It's like the concessions people and stuff. Is that what it is? Like the people who, the studio and, workers or what do you call it? Not a studio, stadium. The stadium, yeah, stadium workers. workers and okay. people that are cleaning up, you know, mm -hmm. maintenance, janitorial staff, all of yeah, that. And it's neat. So I don't know how that worked or who got the money, but they pooled their money and, and actually mm -hmm. gave money to help these workers continue yeah. to live on no salary or no yeah. no hourly wage you know right no it is really really exciting and and i do think that this is a neat reminder for us to just do what we can to um kind of remain connected to each other yeah i think so too my husband's starting a um theology class for people who are kind of just stuck at home. Yeah, I saw so, that. That's yeah, cool. yeah. It's, um, let me see if I can remember the I said off the top of my head. We're all theologians dot, um, <laughs> it's a Wix website, so I forget exactly what it is, but if you guys want to Google, like, we're all theologians, he just created a Facebook group for it. Um, or I th it's something to the effect of like we're all theologians dot wix dot com or dot wix website dot com or something like that. But, um, you know, just opportunities like that for people to be connected, I think is awesome. That is really cool. I was trying to look it up and I can't find it right off the top of my yeah, computer. That's but okay. that's, that is neat. And I have seen a lot of places offering resources for when you're mm -hmm. holed up. And yeah. Or did you know um, Planet Fitness now has free streaming exercise um, videos and things like that? Oh, that's very cool. 
yeah yeah and you don't have to be a member or anything it's it's all just out there same thing people are doing that for kids you know the kids who are home and any kind of curriculum so how is that looking for you like do your kids have actual assignments from their local teachers or what's that like so what they're doing here so our official spring break was last week so this it, they extended it by one week officially so what the teacher i got calls yesterday from teachers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that were saying that there's actually that this is technically still spring break so no assignments oh, okay. need to be done i have heard from his uh, my oldest son's music music instructors mm -hmm. that they would like them to be practicing you know 30 minutes a day and maybe take video of them and send them once a week cool. just to kind of mm -hmm. check in with mm -hmm. my other kids i think i told you that the teachers were really um, making sure that we had electronic right. devices, that we had internet. Mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. idea is that by next week, they will start some form of assignments. Okay. They don't, mm -hmm. they're going to be in touch later this week though. They okay. don't, I don't think they even know yet what they're going to yeah. do. But I did see on the news just now before we got on, um, that they're looking at potentially extending the you know, being out of schools through mid-April for mm -hmm. Alaska. Mm -hmm. I know in in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, I don't know if it's Missouri, the Missouri governor, or if it's Kansas City or what, um, they're done for the year. So Yeah, I've you know, heard of other places who have, have done that as well. A couple mm -hmm. of cousins. And, you know, that's, that's kind of... Uh, it, that's kind of sad when you think of it from the perspective of seniors and graduation, prom, like those things mm -hmm. aren't going to be happening. Um, so, you know, there are these less grave ramifications, but still disappointing for the kids around. So it'll be interesting. I predict that there are going to be some really cool solution to that, you know, that there will be some really mm -hmm. neat community celebrations. Yeah. You know what that, someone needs to get on is like a holographic like meeting room now so that you can still go to prom if you're graduating class but you're all in your own <laughs> space. there you go and you can it's oh like virtual reality you could just do like exactly get, yep. like your yeah like get your avatar and you could pick your dress or your tux <laughs> can you imagine trying to do prom where everyone has to remain six feet away from each other no, that that's not going to work. So I, we I'm were watching sure. a movie the other night and the, two of the characters just shook hands. And I had this funny thought. I'm like, what if 10 years from now, like that's the equivalent of watching one of those movies where you see like someone without a plane ticket running through the airport to catch the girlfriend before she gets on the flight or something, you know, like things that never happen anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, are, well, are we done with handshaking? No, I, my husband and I were watching something last night and I was cringing when I would see people like shaking hand like I, I, I had this physical response like oh don't do that oh wait it's I okay I know um oh did you ever watch Doug the, the cartoon I watched it growing up. I'm trying to think if I did. I don't you know. You probably would have been more in your teens. So my yeah. um, son, who's still recovering from his tonsillectomy, has started watching it. And it's been it's been fun because it's kind of a nostalgia moment for me. But there was one where I forget who it was, but like someone grabs the guy by the face. You know what I mean? I'm like, ew, germs. Yeah. Well, and I have never, I've been like the opposite of a germaphobe. I let my kids eat off the ground and just like, I am, I don't ever You just worry. dump their soup right on the kitchen floor and say, you know, lick it up. Lick so. it up, sister. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. No, not quite that bad. But I know I, what you mean. <laughs> but I really, I've never given it a thought. I'm always like, eh, no big deal. And now I'm, it's like, I'm totally different it's it's a like some yes. people are pretty on top of it anyway right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's a whole new world for me i mean it's like total, it's a drastic paradigm shift yeah i think it it's is. going to be just a global cultural shift yeah and you know maybe this means that i mean how cool would it be to think this might be the last horrible pandemic in the history of humanity like wouldn't that be cool if sort of the i mean i'm not saying that i hope that we all live in isolation for you know generations to come right. <laughs> but you know maybe if we just kind of get it ingrained i don't know i don't know what i'm trying to say but yeah just that yeah if if somehow we heighten our practices to the point yeah. where we're not transmitting things quite as mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Or, you know, I know when I went to South Korea several years ago, people wearing face masks, it was not a big deal at all. Um, you know, whereas here, even now, if you see someone in a face mask, it sounds like, oh, look at that person, you know, overreacting. And there it's, I mean, one in five people, even when you're not in a pandemic, are wearing it. And I don't think that's a bad, I, I wore mine just because it was so smoggy there. And up here in Alaska, we're so not used to that. So, yeah. well, mm -hmm. what's interesting is I used to think that when you saw pictures or video of people in Asia wearing masks, I assumed it was to protect themselves, but mostly they do it when they're sick. Yeah. To it's protect, to protect other people. Yeah. And, and when you think about how crowded a lot of the big cities are, yeah. You know, so you wake up with a little bit of a sore throat or I heard something cute. Um, someone who lives there said, yeah, we do it when, you know, cause we don't want to spread germs, but sometimes we do it cause we don't want to put on makeup. <laughs> That is so funny. You know, kind of like if all you're going to do is run, you know, run down the corner. It's it's set up, you know, almost like um, New York City or something where there's all the little little shops mm -hmm. instead of, you know, like it's not a Walmart. So it's like, you know, you're going to walk five steps to pick up something from 7-Eleven. They had a ton of 7-Elevens, you know, and, and you don't want to get all made up. So you just throw your mask on and do that it. That is so funny. Oh my gosh. It's like, yeah. like the equivalent of just wearing a hat because your hair is greasy or something. Right, right. Yeah. Or, um, you know, the hoodie because you don't want to get dressed up. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. It is funny. I was thinking today, um, I wonder if like the, the leggings and yoga pants companies are seeing a big increase in purchases right now. Yeah. Because <laughs> everybody just, wants to be comfortable and cozy. Everybody's at home. <laughs> well, cool. Well, I know that you're going to have to sign off soon. Yeah. So, so that's an interesting thing. My kids are doing virtual music lessons this week because their music teachers are all switching to virtual lessons. And I'm thinking, man, that would change my mm -hmm. life. That'd be great if I didn't have to travel for music lessons ever again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, cool. we should pray. Is there anything? I think we like, should. Do we want to pick a topic? Like, a topic you know what to I was about? thinking of today? I was, um, I was thinking about the kids who don't have a safe home environment. I was thinking who are about now, that too. You know, unable to get a reprieve at school, yeah. um, or just you know the kids who don't have food at home and aren't going to school to get food. So I would say, yeah, if we want to pray, let's pray for those people, and you know, let's give a shout out to the um, to all the people who are working really hard to make things not fall apart. You yeah. know, the doctors and nurses and retail workers and you know, truck drivers, all these people who are making it so that, you know, Costco still has your toilet paper and things. Yeah. Well, many of us are kind of finding extra time on our hands. There are people that are like working around the clock to make mm -hmm. sure that life as we know it continues. So, yeah, yeah I heard, I don't remember if it was Amazon or some other kind of fulfillment center like that, where basically their employees are given the option of unlimited overtime it's like as much or you know some nurses and some of the oh, wow. places um it's just it's not even shift work it's work as much as you can grab mm -hmm. a quick break come on back it's it's very intense so yeah um let's pray yeah Does that sound good? Pray. sounds good all right i'll start God, we're just so thankful that we still have things like this podcast and internet connection and Facebook groups and ways that we can stay connected, God. And we just pray that you would sustain all the infrastructure going on right now, Lord, and just sustain the economy. And we do pray, especially for children who are not in secure and safe situations right now, Lord. You know each one of their names. I just pray that you would. Um, I don't even know what to ask God, but you know exactly how that you can bring these little ones to safety. And so I pray that you would do that, God. And we just are so thankful for your sustaining power. And we look to you to just sustain us, sustain our families, sustain our health, and really just sustain the world. We've, we've been brought to our knees, Lord, and humbled and have seen just how powerless we are. And we do stand in awe of you and of your power. And we ask for your grace and your sustaining grace over our nation and over this entire world. God, I just echo those prayers and pray that for those children that aren't safe or that um, 
would rather not be at home and would rather be at school or don't have enough food in the house that you would just bring them to mind and, and make them make people aware that they're there um, to their neighbors or their teachers or the school system so that they can be taken care of and they can be fed and they can be um, just lifted up by the community around them. And um, we just do thank you for providing every single one of our needs, Lord. We know that if you clothe the lilies and you take care of the sparrows, you say that you will take care of your children. And we just pray especially for these kids. And um, we do lift up the the first responders of this crisis, the um, people that are stocking shelves, the people that are in the medical profession, um, just everyone that is not given the luxury of staying home and isolated and relatively safe from exposure to the virus. We pray that you would protect them. And God, we pray that, um, that you would just move us in the direction of, of getting this under control, God, that you would be glorified in every situation, Lord, that you would be bringing communities closer together and churches that even though most of them are not meeting now that you would allow churches to be able to find creative ways to reach out to the community and to maintain fellowship and that your name and your gospel would go out and that this time of crisis would drive people to their knees and just drive people to you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So thank you, Jamie. And thanks for those of you joining us. We wish you just health and peace, and we will talk to you real soon.